Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy, and today we're going to talk about Prey, the latest film that is in the Predator franchise, which went straight to Hulu, and which I was surprised about. Uh, when they announced it, they were like, we're doing a Predator prequel, it's called Prey, we're putting it on Hulu. I was like, okay, I'm intrigued, I wonder what that means for the budget, but I felt like they used the budget very well in this. Uh, it's weird. I probably would have gone to see this in a the theater. I've seen, I think, all Predator movies in the theater. I'm old enough to have seen all of them in the theater. And uh, and this one, I probably would have gone to as well, um, even though the last one really put a bad taste in my mouth. Now, I will say, as far as Predator movies go, I haven't disliked on, only that one, uh, the, the most recent Predator, the Shane Black one. That's the only one I didn't like. I like the I love the first one so much. Um, the second one I like a lot, and Predators with Adrian Brody I liked a lot. Um, Alien vs Predators one and two uh, I don't really care for too much, but I don't hate them. Uh, they're they're not great movies I feel, but there are some things in it that I really do like, and it is kind of cool just the raw, you know, thing to see those two characters on screen together, those two icons fighting each other. It's kind of like Freddy vs Jason. I'm like, all right, it ha it services that kind of itch for me, but the Predator I. I absolutely did not like so this movie didn't have to really try hard to make a better movie than the predator but what i liked is that they they went in a very different direction than i would have ant anticipated uh, a studio to go and i think that's because you know with fox being bought by disney and everything they wanted to do something with this franchise so they don't lose the rights to the franchise possibly but they also uh had a small budget so whoever was in charge of this came up with a really unique idea which is let's go back to like 300 to 300 years ago in American history to the Comanche tribe of Native Americans and and have that tell a story about them meeting a predator like one specific tribe in particular meeting a predator for the first time and I, I liked that I was like hey that's cool it's a little on the nose if anyone who knows predator lore they know that they already kind of pull from like Native American culture in a way which is most predators that come to Earth are younglings. They're they're teenagers in most of the films. They're they're teenagers coming to prove themselves into adulthood or manhood or womanhood or whatever. You know, they're coming here to kill a you know specific set of you know kills. You know, they're on hunt. You know, they're they're on Earth to hunt. And uh, and if they get enough trophies and specific trophies in general and survive, especially if they meet a challenge and they beat that challenge. They take the skulls, you know, they take the spines, everything, and they have a trophy room. And that proves that they are ready to be, you know, to graduate in their culture. And that's very much uh, in some regards to some Native American cultures where, in, in this movie in particular, where the main character, uh, Naru, played by Amber Midthunder, who I loved in Legion. If you've never seen the show Legion, which is also a Fox show um, that still stars uh, the son of Charles Xavier, uh, it's really, really good. They went three seasons it's amazing and she was on that show and so uh so i was when i saw her in the movie i was like wait a minute that's the girl from legion because i didn't recognize her in the trailer so when i saw her in the film and she was talking i was like holy cow that's her that's fr she's from legion so that made me even more pumped um i will say her character though i think sometimes they call her daughter but her name's naru um and then she has a, a guy a, a dakota beavers who plays her brother in the movie tabe i believe is his name um and i think sometimes they call him son uh I liked their dynamic, their relationship, the brother-sister dynamic, um, but I feel like they they did a little bit of modern writing with her character where they went a little too much into the, you know, I'm a woman and you guys don't accept me and you think I can't do things because I'm a woman kind of thing. And it's like, yeah, I'm sure that was like a mentality and that is a mentality still at parts today where people think women can't do things. Um, and sometimes it's a sexist thing and sometimes it's it's not a sexist thing. It's just uh, like in this case, the brother gives her a chance to prove herself against a lion and then she succeeds and fails at the same time. But because she didn't full on succeed, he tells her like, look, you, you took your chance. You, you did OK, but you you know, you couldn't handle it. You know, you can't handle the hunt. Um, so I felt like it was a little justified the way when he, he had a turning point in the story where he was supportive of her and then he turned and said, no, nah, you can't you can't do this. But I think that's justified because she almost got killed you know, fighting a lion. Um, she did wound it. Um, and later on, we reveal that she wounded it more than she, she even thought she did. And that allowed her brother to kill it. Um, but still, I feel like uh, his, his he was a little justified in that moment where she was just she's too hungry and eager to prove herself. 
and whether you're a man or a woman, sometimes that's that could lead to flaws and, and, and mistakes uh, to to be made. Um, so uh, so yeah. So overall, though, Amber I think did a good job in the movie. And besides some of that writing stuff, I overall liked her arc because by the end, I think she proved to even me, who was a little doubtful about her at first, that she was um, worthy of this hunt. And uh, and her brother, though, it was it's really cool the parallels because I'm going to get into some spoilers here. So I'll say real quick before we get into spoilers. Um, the rest of the cast I really didn't know. I don't know who you know where they're from or what movies they've been in. I just recognized Amber, and I thought she was great um, in Legion, and I thought she did good here, especially by the end of the story. But the actor who played her brother, Dakota, he did awesome. And I think the director directed the living hell out of this for what he could. I mean, some of the shots looked really cheap and low budgety, and it looked like someone running around in the woods in modern day uh, in some scenes. But... I, f I understand their limitations, and I feel like there were some shots in the movie, like Amber's character Naru in the tree with a spear fighting the lion, and that wide shot where you get the background and the vistas and stuff, like, I thought the director did a great job with that kind of stuff. Uh, and if you hear noise in the background, that's just Ace, like, rummaging around, and you can see him running back and forth, so, um, so yeah, anyway, so, uh, and speaking of which, uh, Naru has a dog that, uh, follows her around and she uses to help her hunt for things and track bears and things like that. So I like that. I like that the movie started and it's, it shows you that back then a small village of people, their whole lives could be disrupted by the appearance of one wild animal. So there was a lion that was causing trouble and then a bear not too far away and they couldn't move, keep moving. They couldn't move their village. They could, they had to stay where they were and then they use this up as an opportunity. Okay, which of the younglings can go out and hunt this thing and kill it so that we can continue to progress and expand and, you know, and build our civilization here. And so I like that. I liked it that it showed that everything could come to a standstill because of one wild animal back in these times. And it, it, it causes everyone to kind of restructure and focus, uh, refocus on what they need to do. And their focus was to kill this lion. And then that, that's what they do. The, the younglings go out to catch the lion and she gets injured, but she ends up injuring the lion too. But then her brother gets the official kill. Um, and so, uh, and that does play in later when her brother, now that we get into spoilers, her brother wounds the predator in a badass fight where he's like using bow and arrows, tomahawks, like everything. And he's fighting this predator and he's going to town on him and he weakens him. And you think, okay, you just weakened him a little bit. And now the sister is going to come in and, and take over. But he weakened the predator a lot more than you thought, much like the, it parallels the lion from earlier in the story. So in the end, she helped her brother progress into adulthood. And then at this point in the movie, he helps her progress by seriously injuring the predator. And then she uses her brains because she's like learning new technologies. They run into some other uh, French settlers and stuff who are coming over and they're trying to track the predator. And, uh, and trying to capture it, of course, right? And she learns about guns from them. And then she learns about the Predator's helmet and how it can shoot uh, these lasers. Or it, like if it shoots something out of its uh, wristband or something, that the helmet will track it and it'll, it'll find its target. So I was like, oh, that's so cool. And then she uses that against the Predator. So she uses her mind um, to outthink it uh, when she knows she's in trouble. And then she takes it back to a place where she almost died and put the predator in the same situation that she was in. And I was like, this is very clever. Like I thought her solution to fighting something that was clearly more powerful than her, even wounded, still more powerful than her, she used her brain. And I thought that was very awesome and very clever, but that's very much what Native Americans did a lot of times when they were hunting animals. And they show it in the beginning of the movie where she's trying to listen for things and she's like looking for you know, tracks and everything. And she's trying to think like the animal that's what she does at the end to think like the predator and to, to win and stuff. So I thought it was cool. I mean, yes, there's some things in it that, I, that kind of made me roll my eyes and some of the dialogue wasn't that great, but I thought the performances were good. I thought the cinematography was good. I thought this feral predator, this new predator that they put in here was really cool. It looked very awesome. And the scenes with him like lifting a bear and drinking its blood and stuff, and it was just like, it was cool. There's some cool shots in this that I thought were... I didn't think you could bring a lot of new stuff to the Predator franchise and the way they do it in this worked, I feel. And it was it was kind of neat. And there's also like a little teaser about the gun. So the gun she uses to shoot the Predator and blow part of its brains out, um, she uh, she it, it's actually listed with a pirate's name on it, a French pirate. Uh, and it says 1917 or, or 1715 or something like that. And that's a similar gun. I don't know if it's the same exact gun, but it's a similar gun from Predator 2, which said the same thing on it. But uh, that that gun manufacturer and, and pirate 
there's a cool story behind him in like the lore and stuff. Uh, there's a cool story about this pirate who all of his men turned against him, uh, you know, in the 1715. And then he made these guns and he gave each one to people on his ship. So that's assuming, you know, these guys that were in the woods that, uh, you know, Naru found um, that were trying to capture the predator. It's assuming they were from that ship. You know, they, they knew this pirate um, and this pirate, he actually uh, fought against his men. They turned on him. Uh, while he was fighting a predator, uh, I guess, and they turned on him. And so he had to turn and fight against his men and he ended up teaming up with the predator to fight against his men. Uh, and then some got away and then a lot of his men were killed. And then the predator and this pirate duped it out for dominance <laughs> and the predator won and killed him. And that's where it got that gun. And I think it ended up giving it to Danny Glover in the second predator movie. So I don't, again, I don't think this is the same exact gun, uh, from that pirate ship. Um, but it's a nod to it, like a strong nod to it. I mean, it's a, a, almost an identical gun to it. So, but I don't think we can say it's the exact same gun, but it's certainly, it could be possibly, maybe, I don't know, but th there's already a story behind that gun. So, I don't know if it's the same gun, but either way, um, that was a cool nod where she throws the gun to her elder and her elder looks at the gun and it's the same shot from Predator 2 with when Danny Glover had the gun. So little nods like that I thought were cool, uh, helped uh, tie it into the world, made it part of the, the actual canon of the movies, uh, which is awesome. Um, but uh, but overall, I just it was a fun movie. I mean, it, it was and I... I I think I went in with slightly lower expectations. I was hoping it would be good, but because of the last Predator movie, I was like, eh. But I think they stuck the landing on this one. Uh, you know, it, it starts off a little slow, dialogue's a little clunky and a little cheesy, and a little too on the nose at times, and eye rolly and cringy. But I was able to see past that when they got into some of the fights, some of the cinematography, and then the development of some of the characters. And I really liked Dakota Beaver's character, uh, Tabe. He was awesome. And Amber, I thought, uh, by the end, I really fell in love with her character as well. And it reminded me a lot of, um, I can't remember her name. She was like a Japanese character in the books, uh, Alien vs. Predator. And she ended up teaming up with a predator, Broken Tusk, um, and, uh, and, and teamed up with him to kill an alien queen. So it reminded me a lot of, of that kind of relationship. Only in this one, she doesn't team up with the Predator. She full on <laughs> wants to kill it uh, because it's killing, you know, everyone and everything around their village. So, uh, yeah. So I would say if you have Hulu, it's definitely worth checking out. You know, get get Hulu for free for a week if you want and go watch it. Um, but, uh, yeah, Hulu is a great service. I like having it. And so when I heard this was coming to Hulu, I was very excited. I was like, all right, cool. I got Hulu. I'll, I'll keep it a little bit longer so I can watch this movie. And now all the Predator movies have been uploaded to Hulu, at least the two Alien vs. Predator movies have, and then Predator 1, 2, and Predators. I don't know if The Predator is on Hulu. I didn't even bother to look, but I did a marathon. So I watched this, and then I watched Predator 1, 2, and Predators, and then I went back and watched this again. Uh, so yeah, I had a, a blast. So for this movie to get me pumped enough to go back and watch the other movies, and then come back to this movie, that's saying something. So as a longtime Predator fan, I, I'm very much uh, accepting of this movie being part of the canon and we can just forget about the last movie that came out and just accept this one as Predator 4 officially or Predator 0 if you want. So uh, let me know if you've seen this movie. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'd love to hear them whether you agree with me or disagree with me. Whatever it is, we'll talk down below. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff and I'll have more videos to you very soon. Peace.